Welcome to Civilizational Thought. Today we are with Naoki Yamamoto, Kaim Naoki Yamamoto. Uh, after a long time of nine months, um, I'm, able, I'm able to be active on this channel again, inshallah. And I will continue uh, doing monthly interviews or lectures. Uh, that's the plan anyway. So I will introduce Kaim Naoki Yamamoto and then I'll go to questions and answers, inshallah, with him and have a nice interview with him, inshallah. Uh, Kayim Naoki Yamamoto is a lecturer at Ibn, Ibn Khaldun University in Istanbul, Turkey. He has a PhD from Kyoto University. Some of his uh, interest and research topics are Islam, Islam in the East, Islam in East and uh, East Asia, Futuva, Ottoman Tasawwuf, Naruto, T Tariqa, uh, which we'll be examining in this interview, inshallah. Uh, he knows Japanese, English, Arabic, and Turkish, as far as I know. If there is any extra, we'll know, inshallah. And Alhamdulillah, he is, is today with us to talk about Tasawuf and Japanese culture together with various related topics. Welcome, uh, Naoki Yamamoto. Yeah, thank you very much. And thank you for pronouncing my name correctly. Because uh -huh. usually uh, many people uh, call me like Nokia ya Yamamoto or like Naoki Yatomato or like you know, or something <laughs> like that. It's, no. It seems that like it's really difficult. Yeah, uh, my, my ear is good and reading is good, Alhamdulillah. So. I did the so yeah, this is the first time actually. Good. Me. I'm happy. Um, I'll just jump right into questions. Uh -huh. So for our viewers to be familiar with your uh, context, uh, can you tell us about your journey into Islam and how you eventually ended up uh, being a lecturer in Ibn Khaldun University in Istanbul? Uh, okay, so Bismillah, like, thank you for inviting me to this program. And you know, I would like to start with the question that how I become like Muslim then. And you know, I became Muslim like 12 years ago uh, in Cairo. But before that, uh, uh, you know, not only Islam, but I was studying a lot about like religions, like not only Islam, but Christianity or Buddhism or like Judaism or any like Chinese philosophies and so on. But I just found uh, that at the time, I was undergraduate student of the Doshisha University. Uh, Doshisha University was the like, you know, like a, it's a Christian, some kind of Christian university in Kyoto, Japan. And at the time, you know, I was seeking, how can I say, some kind of like truth. Like, you know, I was young and also, you know, I was thinking so many things and you know, sometimes I got confused and something, but I, I really want to know that why I am in this world or what is the you know the purpose of the life and so on so that's why you know i you know i was you know some kind of tried to you know i was attending some of the you know activities in the temples or the church or you know i was reading lots of books in the library and then i found one book sure, sorry i brought it here. this one it says, Yasashi Kamisama no Ohanashi. Like, uh, it's the like introduction to uh, like this like, introduction to the uh, like a story of the god. It says, Is it a he, uh, is it written, written by a Japanese person or? Yeah. Yes, it's Japanese. And it didn't say any about name of the religion, it just said it's the story about the god. But I have started reading this. And you know, I got so amazed by you know the uh, the concept of you know, this work that you know how we can you know it talk about how we can overcome our ego and how we can like bend ourselves to the destinies of the God and how actually you know the God loves us uh, or you know God is warning us. Uh, mm, or it's more like a spiritual uh, guide, not like a, you know uh, convince you that that God exists, etc. Yes, it's like a spiritual guide. And then in the last page, I found that you know the author is the Muslim. It's a Japanese Muslim. Mm -hmm. And her name is the Habiba Nakata Kaori. And and also and also I found that you know her husband was working at the Doshisha University. So so I thought, you know, this is the destiny. Like this is the moment. I, you know, I, you know, I saw that I, sh I must not miss this chance. So, you know, uh, I checked the website with Doshi University, and I sent an email to the, you know, her husband. You know, the Nakata 
sensei, Nakatako sensei. And the, uh, and you know, I met him, but you know, but you know, Nakata sensei told me that Habiba Nakata Kaori sensei has already passed away. Uh. So, you know, in the last, uh, actually in the last pages, you know, the author Nakata Kaori sensei was writing that, is, uh, was saying that, you know, now she is like fighting against the cancer, but you know, uh, but you know, uh, with this, I can say, illness that she learned about, you know, about the destiny or the, in the cause of a tawakkur or the taslim. Uh, but I saw, you know, she was still, you know, alive, but, you know, but I just found out that she was already passed away. But, uh, but you know, when I told the Nakata Kosen, you know, her husband, that was I he became a Muslim? Muslim. Yeah, I see he's also Muslim. Like he became Muslim in, the, uh, in Cairo too. And he has a PhD at the Cairo University. And his specialty is the uh, political thought of the even time he is. But when I talk about this work, you know, when I talk to, you know, Hassan Sensei, that I go so, so amazed by this book that, and I want to study about Islam. And, uh, you know, uh, he told me that, you know, this is how the Islamic civilization, like, ha, you know, has, how can I say? has been, uh, you know, continuing. Like he says that, you know, uh, Islamic civilization is not about the politics. Islamic civilization not based on like economy, but Islamic civilization is based on the transmission of the knowledges. Mm. And Nakata Kaori Sensei, like she already passed away, but her ilm, you know, he knowledge, uh, her knowledge, they still exist, you know, in the form of the book. And when we inherit, her knowledge, like her life, you know, her ism, uh, will you know will live inside me. So my so at that so in that moment, like my existence is not uh, not only about my existence. Like my existence become her existence as well, and her existence is also based on her teacher's existence and the nourishes, and also her teacher's like, <laughs> existence is based on you know his teacher's existence. And he said, you know, this is called silicida, you know, yeah. the connection of the knowledges. And, in, and when we trace back to the, until the origin, it goes back to, you know, the prophet Muhammad. And, and he told me that now, uh, 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 now he will accept me as, the, uh, as a student and uh, Hassan Sensei gonna be like uh, gonna be the Sensei, you know. Is it like a Sheikh Murid relationship? But yeah. So this is how you know my intellectual endeavors start. Mm. Is is he <laughs> is he part of a tariqa or is he like is he just a normal teacher for you? Like is it like no, a... uh, actually he he's a really interesting figure. Like you know the, he when he was a PhD student in Cairo University, he was a really radical Salafi jihadist, but <laughs> he was. But he's also a student of the Sheikh Nazim in the Kibris. Ah, you know so Sheikh Nazim. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know him. Yeah, he's very famous. Yeah, and he is the Khalifa of the you know the uh, Sheikh Nazim uh, Tariqa. Mm. So he knows he knows a lot about like Ibn Taymiyyah, but also he knows a lot about these Naqshbandi practices. Mm. And and he gave me some important cures uh, that when we study about like Islamic nourishes, the one is uh, one of them is the Sohba. You know, sohbet, like being together. Like Islamic knowledge is not some kind of like you can download your knowledge from the, you know the, like a cloud service system or like you know you can or as long as your uh, your access to YouTube, like you know you can get anything you want. Like you know, Islamic civilization is not like that. For example, and now we do, most you, of the people who met who, who meet Islam in the first time don't yeah. meet this kind of uh, people. You were very you know, Allah has blessed you with this brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like in that sense, I was really lucky. And now we are doing interview, but I don't think this interview itself is not that effective because our real effective thing is this sohbet. So, uh, and this is how, you know, Hassan uh, Hoja told me. And then, uh, actually this story is going too long, but uh, then, you know, Hassan Sensei, and I start teaching me the Arabic or the basic Islamic knowledges. And he brought me to like Malaysia, like Indonesia, and Syria and Egypt 
and the UK as well, uh, not, not for sightseeing, but you know, I met lots of Muslims in the UK. And you know, he literally expand my world. You know? And this is how, you know, uh, and you know, through this journey, I found that you know, my, you know, before that, I was always thinking about myself, that, that what should I do or how I can overcome you know, my, how can I say, you know, destructive thought and everything. But, you know, when I met lots of, you know, the Muslim all around the world, you know, it just, it helped me to think that I'm in just a little part of this universe. So, you know, the, like, you know, my, my concern is not that important. Like, you know, the, what, what I should do is that, you know, how I can like uh, contribute to the society or the world or even a big community. And, and, that's, and he brought me to Cairo to study basic Arabic at the time. And, and you know, the, uh, how can I say, like Egyptian society was really attractive to me. I don't know, like uh, in some way. So I have decided to become Muslim and then I become Muslim. And after that- So you became Muslim after you went to Egypt? Yeah, after we went to Egypt. I became- uh, not when you met the uh, brother there. Uh, uh, no, like Hassan said that like, he didn't. Uh, he didn't force me to become Muslim or something like. That. Yeah, he he was you know he would just have start being my sensei, and and in the Cairo in the uh, and in the Cairo you know uh, I have decided to become Muslim and now I've been Muslim. Did he become your sensei in terms of like uh, as as a part of a Japanese tradition, mm -hmm. or was he your sensei in in in, in terms of Islamic tradition, like you, 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 you call maybe you call him sensei, thinking that in, in your tradition there is sensei and his student, I am his student. Did you think that like that, or was he thinking that I am like uh, his teacher and he's my student in the Islamic tradition? I think in both sense, like in, in this sensei uh, is, you know, you know, but Hassan sensei, he was my sensei to me, both in this traditional Japanese sense. And both in Islamic sense, and I don't think there's a big difference between this, you know, the sheikh and you know, the sensei, the relation. You know, it's like a spiritual, you know, the guide uh, to the students. In sense. Right. And what I was talking. It is very important because you know, in most of the cultures, maybe there is uh, some type of uh, elements from this uh, sheikh, murid, sensei, student relationship. But um, I don't think it exists in most of the world, you know, most of the places around the world now. Uh, it's yeah. very rare to see. Yeah, it's true too. And uh, I think, you know, what is really good about him is that he never tried to show me that he is some kind of like perfect human being or something like, you know, he always, you know, lived as he is. And, you know, and he was never been a perfect. And uh, this is what you know really attracts me a lot because other you know, I'm not you know I'm not criticizing the others but you know some of so-called religious leaders they only try to show their good sides and talk about like you know the only like you know the sweet like uh, uh, you know sweet things like let's love each other and you know and let's help each other and you know. Uh, life is difficult, but red struggle, or something like that, you know, and everyone can say this kind of thing. But but Hassan Sensei was always tangible, and he and he never hide his like you know the concerns or like you know the, sometimes uh, you know <laughs> sometimes he got like you know, upset or like you know, yes or something he got yeah, like, so sometimes our teachers uh, makes us feel like uh, we need to be perfect or mm -hmm. we shouldn't have any vulnerabilities or. Uh, we shouldn't have setbacks or something. So this is very yeah. important. Yeah. Yeah, like he never showed himself as some kind of like authority. Like you know, he just lived in front of me, you know, as like one human being, like he's seeking for the truth. And you know, uh, also there was an interesting uh, moment that you know, uh, one non-Muslim Japanese asked him that. Uh, you know that he is thinking about becoming Muslim, but he had but he could not make a choice because like he he still loves like work or like alcohol or something, mm. and and has in Hassan says replied to him that you know that 
you know, you just you, know, you can just become a sinful Muslim, as you know, like uh, like uh, as we are. It's like you don't have to be perfect. Like you, you you can just become Muslim who eats pork, or you can just become Muslim who who drinks alcohol. That what is important is that you know, you believe believe in something, and yet you make a mistake that you can still struggle to seek the truth, or you can still struggle to develop yourself. Like this is what important. Like this is what you know, he said, and it was really into, you know it, it was quite shocking to me because the other teachers, you know. Or other preachers, they never say that. Oh, you can drink alcohol. You can drink it. You, know, you can eat the pork. Or you, or like you can, or you can just. You know, but he said that you know, all Muslims are sinful. Yeah, actually, all human being make a mistake, and commit a sin. And but what is important is the tawbah. That's what he said. You no know, repentance. In Turkish, they call tawbah. I think the tawbah. 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 Right. Tawbah. Right. Returning to the Allah. And this journey is not like you know the perfect thing. Like it's not it's not like you know the Marvel hero comics or something. Like you know, and that you know actually you make mistake more than you make you make good things. But what is important is that you always make repentance, and but yet never give up, and try to like you know throw yourself you know to the Allah you know until the last breath, and. Uh, and also, in you know, other time, I was a university student, and one of my, one of my favorite is was like Naruto. Do you know Naruto? This book. I I heard, but I am not a fan of uh, Naruto. I don't I don't know much about it. Ah, choka you pay me. Mutraka Yeah, you you definitely must. Yeah, there there is a good uh, trend in Turkey to watch or, or listen or read this kind of stuff, but it never uh, you know attracted my interest. But maybe after this interview, I'll be into this. Yeah, of course. I can even send this book to you. Like, just tell me your address. And I yeah, thank you. I'll be that. So, you know, when I see it, Hassan Sensei, you know, I, you know, it just came to me that Hassan Sensei is actually like, you know, the Sensei in Naruto, like this, you know, the Jiraiya Sensei. Like Jiraiya Sensei, he was also not the perfect. Actually, like he, he, he was far from the perfect. He made a lot of mistake. But you know, but. In this story, like he cares so much about the student, and also he never gave uh, he never gives up on teaching, or like, he never gave up on transmitting his knowledge and experience to the students, and this is how, and you know this is how I start thinking that maybe there is a connection between like Japanese tradition, and also the Islamic tradition, and this is how you chose your um, you know studies and research? Uh, not actually, at, at that moment, I just still thinking, but when I moved to Istanbul, it's become more like, a, you know, like yakin, like certainty, like, like uh, so mm. after I become Muslim in Cairo, I, I came back to Japan, but, you know, there is no like good environment there, you know, it's not like, you know, there's no Ifra, you know, like Islamophobic thing, like, you know, but just, you know, uh, if, if you want to study about Islamic sciences, uh, you don't have any enough like do, do you have an islamic community there in tokyo no, it's really in small, like you know the, and also Jap you know population of japanese muslim is like 0.001 percent of the whole thing mm, yeah so it's impossible so i was seeking you for an opportunity to seek like more knowledge and you know, and there was an international conference in the doshi university i think like 10 years ago or something and and uh, one Turkish scholar came to this international conference and gave a talk about like open civilization. And that was also really interesting. And his name was Recep Shantar Koja. And I, you know, I consulted with him that I want to study like Islamic sciences or Arabic. And also I want to know about more like Muslim community or Muslim society. And he advised me to study uh, at his uh, educational institute called ISAR. Mm. And I, Which year was and this? I, hmm? Which year was this? I think 10 years ago, I think. 10 years, there, there was no Ibn Khaldun University then. Yeah, there was no Ibn Khaldun University then. And, and, I was, and I came to Istanbul and I studied like basic Arabic and also like basic Islamic uh, knowledge. And, and at that time I was living in the student dormitory with my friends uh, at ISAR. And I found out that lots of these Turkish you know, the students are also reading Naruto too. And, and I was, and I asked some, you know, friends that why you like Naruto as much, and he said, you know, this, and 
he told me that you know there is something like Islamic flavor on the in the shonen manga, and and this is and this is the one I know I, you know I have start thinking really seriously that you know even these Muslim students are thinking that there is some kind of Islamic flavor in our like in Japanese entertainment. And also, I was also thinking that you know there is some kind of like a connection in in the art, like uh, this, especially this shonen manga and traditional Islamic you know the concept. So that's why you know I maybe so I have started thinking that you know maybe this is a good way to introduce Islam to the, you know Japanese audiences. Mm. And after that, and also you know my main. You know, concern was the Tasawo. So, you know, I have started like reading lots of Tasawo literature. And also, I am also otaku. So, like, you know, I have been reading lots of, you know, the mangas and animation and watching animation too. And this is how, you know, I, theor I theorize, you know, uh, my framework. And 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 after came, and coming back to Japan, I have, I have finished the, my PhD at Kyoto University. And there was, you know, uh, and and in, in Turkish, they call it like nasip. I don't know, I kind of, you know, I encountered like those, you know, uh, good opportunities. And now I'm studying, you know, I'm teaching at the Ibn Haldi University. Yeah, and Mashallah, I, your, your story is like Allah has led you step by step to the to the path you're supposed to be going. This is very interesting. I took uh, the And now I'm teaching uh, at the Ibn Haldi University. And and I'm teaching about you know Islam in East Asia, and also uh, now I'm teaching like Japanese class uh, as well. Yeah, I think you give uh, Japanese classes to high schools as well. Uh, yeah, I'm also giving. Uh, yeah, I'm also teaching Japanese at Marumara Nadur Imam Hatib. Uh, are the are the students interested or how is it? Yeah, yeah, the students are really smart actually. You know. And uh, yeah, I mean, they are starting so fast. I'm, mean, yeah, mashallah, you know, I'm already 31st years old, so I don't have that kind of like, you know, energy. But, you know, but high school students, you know, they have, you know, you know great potential. So like, yeah, they're fast now there. Yeah, inshallah, they will serve, serve in the future in this field. Yeah, and I'm also, um, you know, I'm so enjoying like teaching there because the I read one uh, uh, book which is uh, written by uh, Nureddin Topuchu. Uh, he is also like a major, like, you know, the intellectual uh, in the modern Turkey. Yes. And he was also working in high school. And his life is also like a movie. So I know, I, I really want someone to write, you know, his story in, in English or in you know, published. You know. And, you know, he, he needs to be known in the world. But you know, anyway, you know, I really like him. So, you know, working at the high school was one of my dreams. You know, working in a high school in Turkey, so, mm. so yeah, like you know, Alhamdulillah, like you know, this Marmar uh, Anadur Imam Hatib, like you know, uh, really offered me a great opportunity like, working there. That's great. So, um, how would you describe the key mutual aspects of Ottoman Tasawuf and <laughs> Japanese culture, and do you think that uh, they are still relevant today in both societies? Mm. Yeah. So as I said, I think in the uh, it's not only about Ottoman Tasawuf. I think it's Tasawuf in general. But the most important keyword is like tauba, you know, repentance. And this is what actually is really missing in the contemporary society. That the, you know, that we all make mistakes and we are imperfect. Yet, you know, the God Allah gave us a potential uh, to seek the perfection. And and the shape, you know, senses are also the same. They are also the human being, you know, they make a mistake. You know, we cannot like you know the worship him or her as kind of like you know the perfect religious authority. And they are also the comrade. You know, you know they are they are also you know the struggling, the seeking the truth like us, like together. So another keyword is sohbet. Like you know, they are also you know uh, uh, being together with us. You know to seek the truth. And there is one important concept in the Tasawo is the you know the, the ideal shape is the Kamil and the Mukamil. The Kamil is perfect. Uh, and the Mukamil is the uh, like help others to become uh, perfect as well. But of course, it's a human being that so we never become perfect. But the important, uh, important uh, message here is that, you know, the, you know, the ideal human being is not only make, uh, you know, yourself perfect, but also make others, you know, 
to see uh, to the stage of perfection as well. So this is how you know the society should be. And we, when you read not only the Naruto, but also in the other like you know, shonen manga or like do you know uh, Samurai uh, Runoni Kenshin Samurai X? I, I know I know Samurai, but not not the one you you specifically said just now. Well, how about Demon Slayer? Sorry, Demon Slayer. Demon Slayer. I, I've heard that. Yeah, I, 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 actually, I've seen. I guess. Yeah, Demon Slayer. That's oh, that's really? that's the one. I guess the the one that's famous. Yeah, yeah, right now in Demon Slayer is the most popular like animation. Yeah, I, I've heard. I mean, yeah, in Japan also in World War Two. And anyway, now all the shonen manga, there was a sensei and also you know the students, and you know, and and no, what was talking? Oh yeah. And this Tauba and Sohobet has always been an important keyword there. But, but the other, for example, when we look at the contemporary society, you know, there is no, sometimes, especially in Japan, like there is no like forgiveness or like there is no some kind of, uh, kind of compassion, uh, compassion. Like, is it like, is, like is, is Japanese yeah. culture is centered in, centered in success that you can't fail in life, etc. They expect you to yeah, success, success, be successful all the time. No, not in that sense, but you know, but you know, people always try to judge the others. Right? Mm. And when and when you like, you know, they drop from the society, like there is no like uh, like safety net. Like uh, if you become a loser, then you will become a loser on the end of your life. And uh, this is so stressful. And this is why you know now you know Japanese people are really you know, suffering by this kind of you know, social pressure. But uh, but you know if you look at the shonen manga or uh, you know the Tasao literature, you know, they talk about more like a compassionate society, more compassionate community, and uh, which embrace the imper uh, imperfectness of the human being, and uh, yet you know try to like help each other you know, uh, for for the good. And this is also another important concept called ESAR. The ESAR, I think Turkish is also called ESAR, right? Yeah, the yeah we, you say ESAR, uh, but it's, it, it comes from the Arabic. It's a good uh, match because ESAR is uh, a shortened version of, I don't know how, how the, how, what the, uh, you know, huruf um, means, but um, ESAR in Arabic is ESAR. Yeah, Isar. Isar means like, you know, they sacrifice yourself to help the others. The in, in English is called altruism, but, you know, but altruism is also the major, like, the keyword, like, you know, in Tassaro literature, you know, uh, there is a lot of makam, like, spiritual stage of human being, and, the, and one of the last stage of, the, you know, the human being is that, you know, this, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, to, is to acquire this, this stage of the Isar. Like you completely overcome your own ego, and 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 you can even sacrifice yourself for the for the others' good. And uh, now I'm writing uh, the essay three is called Introduction to the Soul Wolf uh, in uh, one of, uh, in the uh, Shueisha publisher in Japan. Shueisha is a major, major publisher of the manga, and I quote manga. Both, yeah, manga. Like you know, like Naruto. It's a publisher of Naruto. Mm. And they, don't, they don't only do entertainment; they do intellectual stuff as well. Uh -huh, yeah, yes. So this is like accessories. I quote a lot of scene from Naruto, mm. and I, I explain the concept of the soul. Mm. So did you did you have any feedbacks? Did you did you publish anything before about this issue and had had feedbacks uh, yeah. about the connectedness between between the soul and uh, Naruto, etc. How did yeah, these people did, react? Yeah, for example, like, you know, I also do more like so-called typical academic work. It's called, you know, uh, this is the Japanese translation of the Futuvet. Uh, it's, this Futuvet is written by the Abu Abdurrahman Salami. This is the first literature, Islamic literature on the concept of the Futuwa. Mm. And, I, and, and I call this, uh, this is like Islamic Bushido. It's Islamic like an... Uh, code of the samurai uh, because I personally Bushido is the code of samurai yeah code of samurai but, uh, because you know, there are lots of similarity between this futuwa 
and and the philosophy of the samurai. But uh, this has not become that popular because this is academic work. Right? Mm. Personally, I really like this work, but you know, not the maybe, most. Maybe you maybe you'll write a type of comic book and yeah, make it you know put it in time inside entertainment. Maybe that way it will get popular. Yeah, maybe like in, in that way. But when I started this project, like introduction to Tasao through manga, like you know, I got a lot of you know uh, reaction from especially like young you know students. So yeah, for me, like you know, it just you know, I got the click. Like you know, the, now I found a way <laughs> to you know introduce the Islamic concept to the Japanese audiences, like me. And and some of the students said that you know that they never thought about like connection between like you know. The are like shonen manga and Islamic civilization because in Japan the most of the understanding about Islam is influenced by the media and media is always influenced by you know so-called Western like prejudice. So you know when it comes to Islam, you know most people think that Islam is the religions of like ter terrorist or you know what a uh, terrorist or like it's, it's a religion in the desert or something. Uh, but you know, uh, I think you know our pro you know my project is like you know the uh, uh, would help Japanese you know Japanese audiences to uh, you know, see more like spiritual aspect of the Islamic civilization. And another interesting point is that I got a good reaction from the uh, Muslim students in Turkey as well because I found that there are lots of like you know. Uh, fans of you know Japanese manga animation and you know like I encounter when I was a student you know uh, at ESAR but they never uh, encountered some kind of how can I say they you know they said that you know they were always thinking about some connection between Japanese you know culture and the Islamic culture but you know uh, but they, you know my you know, project will it work somehow as like a proof that you know their you know observation has some sense. Yeah, so, definitely. Yeah, but some of the students, uh, you know, it's not very popular that in Turkey that everyone yeah. knows about Sheikh Murid relationship. Uh, mm -hmm. Some of them, you know, don't even know about, know much about it. But when they see it from another culture, or there is some similarities between what I've heard in Turkey. So that yeah. your work uh, as well, uh, you yeah. know, contributed so that it, understanding. Yeah. So interesting point is that now this you know project, the introduction to the South Stream manga, have some you know gives a different uh, you know gives a good opportunity for the Japanese audiences and also like you know the Turkish like students as well. So you know I hope you know this project will eventually become so called like intellectual bridge you know between the Islamic inshallah. And in the Japanese society. May Allah make it a success. Um, in, in one of your tweets, you say, it is easy to ask, is there an English translation of this? We need to create a strong intellectual in infrastructure in our community to study Arabic, Turkish, Persian, Urdu, Indonesian, Malay, and Chinese in order to read books written by our great Muslim teachers. Mm -hmm. I saw this tweet and I, I felt like I wrote it. And this is very important. And I've been myself struggling with this and trying to tell people about this idea because there is, um, there is a huge lack of uh, connectedness between the Ummah in, in normal sense and intellect, in intellectual sense as well, because um, uh, it, it, it may have different reasons, but um, the, the works produced in English language can usually go around the world and translate it in they are translated into multiple languages but mm -hmm. usually the source of our knowledge and source of our tradition is one of those languages turkish persian urdu uh, malay indonesian um, for example these are some of the central languages of the umma and mm -hmm. they are not translated into english or between themselves for example a turkish um, famous book is not translated into Urdu or yeah. into Chinese or an, a Persian book uh, into Urdu, etc. So, um, can you expand on this? Uh, what, what are your ideas? 
Yeah, yeah, well, um, uh, first of all, like, you know, it doesn't mean that I'm not like respecting like English because there are lots of like American Muslim in America and also, you know, Europe as well. And they're also like you know, articulating their own concept in European languages. But, you know, when I was teaching in, in Turkey, I found one, how can I say, like a trend. It's not trend, but I don't know how to, you know, uh, how to put it on the words, but when I always talk about something exotic, like, you know, the Islamic East Asia or anyway, like Japanese culture or the Chinese philosophy as well. They always ask me, like, is there English, is there any English translation of this? Or is there any English, like an article on this? And I guess, you know, uh, at first I didn't understand why they're asking this because they're Turkish students. So why, uh, I was curious why they are not asking me, is there Turkish translation of this? Or is there a Turkish article on this? Because like I, I was doing my PhD on Ottoman Tassau, so I can read Turkish and I can speak Turkish. And, but yeah, I think, you know, this is, you know, some kind of, how can I say, like, uh, this is some kind of like a, you know, prison that, you know, we are stuck in this kind of like Eurocentric mindset that, you know, first we want to study about things about more academically or like, you know, uh, we should read English translation of something or we should read the article which is written by the English. And I can understand that English is a lingua franca, it's the read, uh, it's powerful, like a, uh, you know, dominant language in this today's world. But as a Muslim, like this is not only, uh, this should be, this shouldn't be our only choice. Like, yeah, for example, why do you choose to read uh, a text of Tosavu from Japanese, maybe uh, translate yeah. it into English first? Because, you know, uh, Tosavu in Turkish can be articulated in a very well sense uh, using the Arabic words, etc. Our language is, is, is more rich than most of the others in that sense, but we yes. do go to the the language of the age uh, yeah. to understand that. That's a bit problematic. Yeah. yeah, for example, like you know, uh, there's a tradition called tea ceremony in Japan, and tea ceremony is called sado in original Japanese word. Sado. sado. Yeah, sa means chai tea, mm -hmm. and do means way path. And, the way of the and, tea? Yeah, in English, they translate tea ceremony, but you know, tea ceremony sounds like you know, we have you know, you know, the party or like tea party for the like, like, radical yeah. right wing. But yeah, this is not only about the ceremony, this is our spiritual practice. You know, uh, and this, uh, excuse me, we are here. Uh, for example, this is the fan, Yerupaze, which is used in this tea ceremony practice. Mm -hmm. And this is the sign of the, you know, the shuyuk, you know, the ma tea masters. Tea masters. Yeah, so this is the citizen too. W what does it mean, tea master? The one who can drink tea in the best way? What, what does it mean? <laughs> no, of course not. <laughs> yeah. Then I can, I can become tea master. Really. Like, <laughs> we are tea all tea masters in Turkey, as you know. So this tea master is the one who understands the philosophy of this tea and he memorized millions of you know the Chinese poems and he knows like you know the thousands of the names of the flowers and he knows you know the uh he can uh, understand the millions of differences of the you know the uh, I can say the taste of this air or the water, or he can understand in like you know, the one that you really delicate uh, gradation of the color, so that you know that he can serve the tea in the like best moment. And it's like in a the best, nature expert. Yeah, and in the best form, and this knowledge is also transmitted uh, through these masters. Why is so it so important to you know know about? different tastes and colors and uh, make tea. Eventually you're mm -hmm. making tea. Why is it so important? Oh, so uh, this is like, you know, uh, this is based on the Japanese philosophy that truth lives in our daily life and in, in, the, in the simplest form. So the serving tea is one of the, the simplest, like, you know, the uh, like daily 
activities, right now. And this, in this simplest form, like divinity, divinity lives. And <coughs> yes, and you know this team. What I was talking. Oh yeah, and this, this, and when I read Ottoman Tasaw literature, and I found there is a similar, similar so-called community or, or organization. It's called Tarika. Mm. Like for example, like Mebrevi Tarika, they also have their own like tradition of you know making you know the cooking. It's called Mebrevi Mutafal Like Mebrevi Kitchen. Mebrevi Kitchen. Mebrevi uh, Mutafal. Yes. Uh, like you know when they when the murid enter the, this Mebrevi Tarika, when I'm in Colonia, you know they start like you know like uh, like cleaning you know the kitchen or like boiling the water or like, cooking the pilaf and or just serving the coffee and much. And in, in and through this practice, you know, uh, they can uh, they can seek their like inner uh, uh, like inner side. Journey, yeah, yeah. And and in Taso it's called the Seiru Suruk. And also another and I found another similarity between this Japanese tradition and Islamic tradition. So uh, I found this sado is not tea ceremony. Actually, it's a tarika chai. The chai tarikas. So I found maybe Turkish language is more appropriate to understand our Japanese concept. So that's why I'm telling, like you know, uh, uh, you know, the you know finding English translation of something or like reading the in uh, you know, article is not enough. So in for example, in this in terms of this you know tea ceremony, I think Turkish language or Arabic or like some any a language in Islamic civilization is the best language to understand the Japanese tradition. So if you know Turkish language or Arabic or, or the Japanese, then you can find more like a, uh, you can find more like deeper meaning of our like the culture. So, and this is what, and this is, I think what we're missing right now because, and, and also like we haven't, Somehow we have forgotten this intellectual potential of the Islamic civilization, because Islamic civilization was everywhere. Like it, uh, it has Arabic, of course, and Turkish and Persian, and African languages, and now they have European languages and Urdu too, and Central Asian languages, and also now they have Muslim community in South America and also in America as well, and also the East language, uh, East Asian languages. But this is, for example, I'm gonna show you another thing. This is the you know the Chinese po uh, Islamic poem written by the Muslim scholar lived uh, in the 17th century China. Mm. Is the so, tradition to write it on that uh, yelpaza? What do you call it? Oh, fan. Fan. Is is it the uh, tradition no, to no, write no. The, write the poems on that or? No, actually, I I you know I got the manuscript and I you know I I designed this. Uh, yeah, so that you know we can uh, we can have you know this East Asian Islamic tradition in the today world again. You know, I got inspiration from this key tarika tradition, like the Sado tradition, and and you know this is one of my Ifya project, like reviving the Islamic tradition project. That uh, this you know any books or poem like this is not something should be only stored in the museum or like you know the or the library in the university. Like we should always carry in our tradition in our hand you know in our heart so this is one of my you know symbols like you know i will not let this east asian Islamic tradition just just something you know uh, which already like you know which on the papers only, not in the heart yeah yeah museum like you know the i o you know i always try to carry this one in my heart and i also want to you know uh make uh the uh, how can i say the thought or the philosophy of this Chinese Islamic tradition in a manifest in my life or in my character. Now, of course, like, you know, yeah. It's very good. Of course, um, of course, I myself is making a lot of mistakes. You know, I, I'm, I'm really far away from perfection, but I think this is how, what uh, every Muslim intellectual or every Muslim student like should do. Like we should not, access to our Islamic civilization just for like seeking our career, you know, just to get a PhD or just, you know, to, 
you know, just using our tradition to criticize like Western civilization or something, you know, we should, you know, manifest this, you know, philosophy in our life. And this is what, you know, the, the shonen manga is also teaching as well. That this is all, this is all not about the actions like, uh, you know, man, manga or something like when, especially this Jiraiya sensei, he said that, uh, uh, he said that true ninja is those who endure. Because nin well, can means- Can you say that again? True ninja? True ninja is those who can endure in the difficult circumstances, mm. in the difficult situation. Because nin means sabr, like endurance. So a ninja is sabr and enkishi, those who endure. Well, I've heard that in the first, for the first time. The ninja yeah. is the, the one who has sabr, who does, you know, who's patient and who, who works. Yeah, that's very yeah, yeah. important. So ninja is not someone who wear like a black, like a costume, so not someone who uh, used like a, a katana, like samurai swords to fight against. Like you know, the true ninja is those who can uh, develop his like mental, like spiritual, like you know, the state. Uh, to achieve this new the uh, state, state of endurance, the summer. Mm. Uh, I want to ask uh, a different question. Uh, yeah. Think about a ninja who has, you know, developed him, developed himself in a, in the best way, and is practicing the ninja way. Or was this um, bushido, or so mm. there was a samurai, way, I guess. Yeah. Anyway, so so would would it be easy for him to? Let's say he became he wanted to become a Muslim. Would it be easier for him to um, embody the tradition, Islamic tradition, than to a normal person? You mean for samurai? For samurais or ninja? I don't know. The, I don't know the difference as much. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it's easy. Like, and this is also another important point that uh, that you know when we want to deliver a Islamic message to the uh, Japanese audiences that uh, there are some preachers. You know, come from like Islamic preachers come from you know overseas, and you know, and some of them they talk about like uh, how the atheism is like you know ideologically wrong or uh, how the Islamic concept of like oneness is actually logical or something, but uh, it won't work for Japanese because Japanese are more practical like they try to see the truth in the uh, in the characters of the group, of the people or they try to see the truth in the actions so some people think that you know if they can like uh, uh, win the debate or like, if they can you know show that so called like a strong evidence. like a, yeah i don't know ideological evidence then in Japanese people get convinced to become Muslim, but it will never happen. Like, the true way is that no matter, uh, even though you are imperfect, you know, uh, you have to show, you have, you have to try to embody this Islamic concept in your life, like, like, like you know, Jiraiya sensei. And this is the only way that you can, uh, you can show the, you know, the message is, 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 is Japanese understanding of God is is it monotheistic or um, how, how how is it in there? Yeah, so uh, as I said, is uh, the concept of God doesn't matter for, Jap for Japanese. What is important is that how you try to manifest the concept in your life. For example, like they, how they, they totally look at the practice, not the theology. Yeah, I mean, of course, they will look at us already, but first, they, first thing they will focus on is actions, that if mm. he is really practicing this or not. For example, like, now we are believing Tawhid, right? Yes. You know, the oneness of the God. Then how you are embodying this concept in your life? Bilal-san. Are you asking me? Uh -huh. Well, I, I, I try to direct my worship to only one God and, you know, um, do not separate my love in, in that sense. Um, yeah. You know, that's basically what, what I understand from worship and oneness is that, that I have only one God, one, one God worthy of worship in my head, and I direct yeah. all my actions and worship 
to yeah. him only. That's the basic understanding in me. But oneness in broader terms, uh, yeah. it differs. Oneness in, uh, for example, uh, you know, it, it's different. But it's, I'm another intellectual that can explain uh, different aspects of Tawheed. But no, no, you, you can see oneness in humanity, for example. There is certain mutual values and mutual understandings between people in that way you can uh, express or practice oneness that way as well. Yeah. Do you think that people can understand when you see you're praying someone like you, oh, he's praying for one God or something, not praying for the like Buddhism? Yeah, that's, that's, that's a bit hard to understand from outside, yes. Yeah. Oh, this is another, you know, the, you know, the conversation I had with the Nakata Sensei, you know, my teacher, that, you know, if you want to show, if you want to prove that, you know, that we, uh, uh, that we are believing in this one God, in the sense of Tawhid, then it means that, you know, we should avoid any kind of idols, you know, as now, I think, that, uh, and the first and the first thing we should show is that you know we should not accept the concept of the nation state, like nation state. Mm. It's like we should overcome this kind of identity. For example, like I mean, like some people ask me that are you Japanese or not? I'm Japanese, but it, it doesn't mean that you know I um you know this is not my most important identity as the Japanese citizen. Of course, I have a Japanese passport. And you know when I when, when I go to Japanese like uh, Japan I always show this Japanese philosophy, but this is like politically constructed you know the concept. Yeah, even if it's not political, it's, it's not it's nothing wrong with uh, loving your own culture and loving your own race or anything. It's it's a normal mm -hmm. human tendency to love what you're from, where you're from, your people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So like you know the Hassan Sensei told me that you know as a Muslim, if you want to an embody this Tawhid in your lives, you know, what we should do is that, you know, we should understand what kind of like delusion uh, which, uh, uh, which try to control us, like what kind of like fake reality is trying to like, you know, uh, control our lives. As well as that, you know, this kind of nation state or like the banking system or like, you know, anything with it, like this contemporary society is filled with this kind of fake reality. For example, many people think that pass passport enable us to uh, go overseas, but uh, but this is not the correct. Actually, passport is showing that if we don't have a passport, we cannot go out anywhere. So passport is actually not the sign of the freedom. Is a passport is actually the sign that that we don't have any freedom without it. Yeah, maybe maybe in the in the old world it was very different. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, traveling. in the old way, uh, in Islam, in, in, in Islam, we, ha we have the concept called amana and musta'amin. Like, if non-Muslim want to enter, you know, the Dara Islam, and if they want to stay in the long term, like, individual can issue the passport. It's called amana. And individual can be, the, you know, the one who, you know, the guardian. But right now, you know, this nation state, I'm sorry, it's becoming a very political topic. But, <laughs> yeah, but, go you on, know, I'm, I'm, no problem. Yeah. The nation state is, you know, uh, it, nation state is now is in the strongest like authority, which, you know, which give us permission to do anything, right? Mm -hmm. the, every, uh, basically everything. Well, hopefully, uh, hopefully we will have in the future, uh, you know, a more trustworthy global society uh, in yeah. terms of, you know, making these kind of uh, transitions easier, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, you, I think uh, no one would disagree that we should have this concept of amana, etc. Today, but unfortunately, mm -hmm. our you know the world's current uh, political situation and you know the current philosophy of the age, understanding of the people, etc., doesn't easily allow uh, these kind of uh, transitions into what we would like to have. But hopefully, uh, it's not impossible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but what I want to say here is that you know the, the uh, you know this is how you know uh, we think that we can convey the Islamic messages to the Japanese because you know that we are you know uh, surrounded by this kind of like you know the fake you know fake reality and it gives a lot of pressure. When I read this book, which is written by 
Nagata Kaori Sensei, Habiba Sensei, you know, it really gave me, how can I say, it really made me relax because this book is also talk about like, uh, like you know, the illusion of the dunya, and also and and the, the message is also uh, uh, is quite you know, quite clear that we should only follow one reality, and this reality is like Allah, and and you know, well, uh, uh, what I'm thinking is that the if we can talk you know teach about so called this you know one constant oneness of God to the Japanese audience, audiences, it means that I think uh, we can say that we don't have to worry about anything. And just follow. Uh -huh. uh, yes, just forget, you know, we, we cannot forget, but just try not, don't think seriously about these fake realities. The reality is just one. So, uh, so you don't have to like torture yourself. And and I think, you know, this is how the other, you know, the uh, senseis in shonen mangas were, uh, were doing, you know, uh, when they try to, you know, save their students, uh, they always try to like destroy the illusion, which is like, you know, the, uh, which is like torturing uh, the you know, protagonist. For example, the samurai, Rudoni uh, Kenshin, you know, the Samurai X, there was a really important thing about this Kenshin that he was like, you know, uh, he was suffering for uh, from his past that you know he was assassin and so on, but his sensei uh, is uh, you know try to show him the past for like uh, redemption, and and through the experiences like Kenshin you know became much much less stronger like he and and he and he you know yeah, was able to reach to the next level. Mm -hmm. And, you know, this is what, you know, the, we uh, Muslim shouldn't also should, you know, think too, that, you know, we always try to, you know, how I can say, think, uh, think about our friends or the family and what kind of illusion they're suffering or what kind of the pressures they are, they are in. And, and in, under the, you know, the philosophy of ESR, like we should always like, you know, we are, uh, uh, how can I say, we should always, you know, uh, use ourselves, use our existence, use our, you know, the energy to, you know, uh, break, you know, to break this kind of like, you know, the illusion to say, you know, our community. Definitely. Um, I, I think my questions are finished. I, I have no more questions. Uh, okay. If you want to add anything, yeah, go for it. If you don't want to, uh, we can finish, inshallah. Okay, then uh, anyone who are interested in manga or Japanese, please uh, uh, please enter even Housing University because I'm always there. Uh -huh. yeah, so, yeah, I'm awaiting. Yeah, I'll put your information in the description and if anyone wants to contact you and see your work and they can uh, see from there, inshallah. And I thank you for joining me. This was a great discussion. I've learned a lot and I'm, I just uh, became interested in, uh, you know, this Naruto and uh, what was the one you, you showed me on, on the book? It was Naruto, right? Yeah, it was Naruto, yeah. Yeah, I'm just interested in that, reading in that, inshallah. And I'll go and read some of it. In Turkish, they, they are translated into Turkish, right? Yeah, Turkish, tu yeah there's a Turkish translation too. Uh, this is yeah, good. Mm -hmm. So, uh, inshallah, people will uh, take this issue seriously and contribute into the work. And if there is any Japanese people watching this, uh, consider joining Islam and joining the studies of Qayyim Noiki and Mamoto, inshallah. Yeah, yeah. inshallah. Yeah, uh, the, that was a very great discussion and thank you so much. And maybe see you again in this channel again. Assalamu alaikum. Okay, yeah. Bye bye, Pikachu. Yeah.